calculate the mass of an object, we use a triple beam balance. The first thing to check for when using a triple beam balance is that the weights are over to the left hand side on zero and that the beam is balanced with zero. The next thing you'll do is add your object to the plate. When the beam is all the way at the top, that indicates that the plate is too heavy. So we move one weight. Beginning with the hundreds place in the center, we move over carefully until the beam falls down. When the beam is at the bottom, it indicates that the weight is too heavy. So we move back one. Our target weight is going to be between 200 and 300. We'll carefully next move the 10 weights checking at each notch to see if we've achieved the weight. 260 is too heavy. Next, on the ones weight, using the edge of your pencil or the tip of a finger, slowly push the weight over a little bit at a time until the beam begins to waver. Once the beam is finished balancing, you take your reading. Each weight represents a place value, hundreds, tens, and ones. The mass of this object is 253.5 grams. Here's my ruler. You'll notice that on one side of the ruler are inches. In seventh grade science, we do not measure in inches. So we are going to flip our ruler over and use the metric side, okay? You'll notice that there are numbers listed. Those numbers are centimeters. One, two, three, four, so on and so forth, all the way over here to 30. You'll notice that those numbers are written below long lines. Those long lines denote centimeters, okay? So if you'll recall from the last week, for every one centimeter, there's going to be 10 millimeters. So you can see that these very teeny tiny lines on here are each one millimeter in length. So you'll also notice that there are not only tiny lines between each centimeter, but there's also one longer line right in the center. That longer line is going to denote where five millimeters between each centimeter is located. That's going to help you count a little bit easier so you're not trying to count every single little teeny tiny line. So you can pick up at five, you can subtract from five, or you can simply add from five when it's a number in between each centimeter mark. All right. So when I go to measure an object, first thing I want to make sure that I do is line up the end of the object right over here and make sure that it's lined up at zero. I then want to make sure my object's straight. And I'm going to note where my object ends. This pencil, coincidentally enough, ends directly on 17 centimeters. So it's ending on a whole number. But not all measurements will be this simple. For example, when I go to measure this little guy, you'll notice that, again, I lined him up with zero, but he ends, the last whole number that he reaches is 11. So he goes a little bit past 11. So I'm going to have to figure out how many millimeters or little lines go past 11 
So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to record my answer as 11.4 centimeters. So if a object is longer than a whole number, any of the millimeters behind that number, for instance, this one went four past it, I would record those after the decimal. Now, when I want to calculate millimeters of an object, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that my object lines up at zero, and I'm going to, again, take note of the last whole number that my object reaches. We are using the same pencil that we did first, so you'll notice that it's 17 centimeters long. To calculate how many millimeters that is, we are going to simply multiply that number times 10. Because if you recall, centimeters are 10 times as large as millimeters. So to make this math simple and not to count every single one of these teeny tiny lines, I can simply take the amount of centimeters and multiply it times 10. If I'm measuring an object that doesn't land directly over a centimeter mark, I am going to take note again of the last place that it passed, which was 11 centimeters. I'm going to multiply that times 10, which gives me 110. And then I'm going to count how many millimeters past 11 it went. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4 millimeters past 11. So this time, I'm simply going to add those 4 millimeters to my total that is already 110. So 110 plus 4 will give me a total of 114 millimeters. Measuring liquid volume requires a graduated cylinder. Simply put your eye level at the level of the water and measure from the very bottom of the curve. This is where you'll read your volume from. It's important to make sure that you understand what each graduation value is. Between here and here is 10 milliliters. So each graduation here is 1, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 milliliters of liquid. In this graduated cylinder, each of the large marks only represents one milliliter. So the hash marks in between represent two tenths of a milliliter. So here we have eight, 8.2, and between is 8.3. The volume of this reading is 8.3 milliliters. To calculate the volume of a regular solid, you use the mathematical formula length times width times height. Using the metric side of your ruler, Line up one edge with the zero hash mark and measure over to find the length. The length of this box is 11.4 centimeters. The height of the box is 17.3 centimeters. And the width of the box is 4.8 centimeters. Measuring the volume of irregular objects, 
is more difficult because there are no edges for you to measure and because it's not liquid to fill its container. To measure the volume of an irregularly shaped object, you need to use a method called water displacement. Water displacement requires a graduated cylinder and liquid. To start water displacement, simply fill your graduated cylinder with enough liquid to cover the object that you want to measure. The initial reading on this is 20 milliliters. Then carefully add your irregularly shaped objects to your graduated cylinder. Once all the objects have been added to the liquid, you simply take the final volume and subtract from it the initial volume. We began at 20 and are now at 31. 31 minus 20 leaves us with 11. The volume of the marbles is 11 cubic centimeters. Temperature is measured in degrees Celsius in the metric system. To measure temperature, simply place your thermometer on the object or substance you wish to measure and watch until the line has stopped moving. When the line has stopped moving, you can read the temperature from the thermometer. Don't forget to check the value of each mark on the thermometer before recording your reading. This thermometer reads 24 degrees Celsius.